Hey everybody, it's Emily from Arg Schooling, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the Magicians Trilogy by Love Grossman. So, I read these over the course of like a year and a half. So some of it's not completely fresh in my mind, but I really wanted to talk about the whole series because I feel like this series works best when you think of it as a whole. So the Magicians trilogy is the Magicians, the Magician King, and the Magician Land, all by Lef Grossman. The first book in the series takes place almost entirely in the school of Breaks Bills, and it was compared to Harry Potter for adults. That's what I was going on when I read it. I was I, I heard the tagline Harry Potter for adults and I got really excited and it's not that at all. Not even remotely like that at all. This takes place at a school for magicians but the magic in the series isn't like you're born with it, like in the Harry Potter, you're born with this magic skill trait. Like, it's genetically passed down. Whereas in this series, anyone could learn magic if they were determined enough. <laughs> and it's a really complex, complicated skill. It, it's almost like they're doing theoretical physics. It's, it's something that, like, if you're really smart and you're really determined, you can learn this and it's presented as like really complex and complicated and all the people at Breaks Bills are really intense and focused and they're all working really really hard but they're also all really unlikable people in the first book I really I almost didn't want to finish the series I didn't really like this book I liked it I liked it in theory I liked the idea of it I liked where it was going but I didn't like the characters like I really really hated Quentin Quentin Coldwater is like the main character in the whole series and I really hated him, and I really just, I, I couldn't, I don't know, I just, it, this book on its own didn't work for me. But then I felt compelled to continue on, and I read The Magician's, the Magician's King, which was so much better. Now in the first book, I don't want to give away too, ma too many details because I think it's really integral going into it that you don't know a whole lot, but I felt like the first book was like half break bills, half Fillory. And all you really need to know about Fillory is that Fillory is a magical land from a children's book series that Quentin Coldwater was obsessed with as a child. And you, you a lot of the characters read them. It's sort of like our Narnia series in our world. We've pretty much, most people have at least heard of the Chronicles of Narnia and that these children walk through a wardrobe or they get pulled there in other ways, but they end up in this magical land of Narnia where they become the kings and queens and, you know, they're, the children become the heroes that save the, the, the world, the magical world, and it's just, and the, it's ruled by this god, Aslan. Well, in this series, Fillory is their Narnia and Fillory is ruled by these gods, Ember and Umber, who are like goat men. Goats, I think. They're supposed to be goats. Or sheep. Is it rams? Yeah, I think they're rams. <laughs> Woo! Okay. <laughs> so, so anyway, so that's Fillory. And in the first book, they're in Breaks Bills, and then they find out about Fillory, and they end up getting there. And then the second book takes place quite a bit more in Fillory. But you get some more backstory on some different characters. A character, especially Julia, who you only kind of hear about almost in passing. I think she only shows up like twice in the first book. But you get a whole lot more of her backstory in this book, which is so heartbreaking and tragic. And so in this book, I think the story just it gets more complex. The characters actually start to grow a little. Because in the first book, they're all just very flat unlikable characters like there's really none no character in the first book that I was like I really enjoyed that person I want to be on their side because they're all pretty much just not nice people not doing not nice things but in this book I felt like they all grew a little more and I almost I don't want to say I liked Quentin by the end of this book but I wasn't hating him as much I just finished The Magician's Land which I think was just one of the best 
series enders I've read. It, it's a really great wrap up to the series. I felt like parts of it were were very never ending story ish. I like the whole end of the the book. I was just like, this is very never ending story. Like I almost wanted Quentin to yell out, "Moon Child!" And yeah, I just I loved the way it ended. And I loved that in this book, characters that you just kind of despised in the first book grew on you and you found yourself like rooting for them and really liking them. And I loved the backstory we get in, in this book to the Chatwins, who were the children who went through Fillory the first time. And you get a lot of the backstory about the Chatwins and I really, really liked that because I always found them really intriguing, but you really never got a lot of information about them just sort of in passing because they would talk about the books and you would get bits of pieces like that but like this book you really get to know a little bit more about the Chatwins so that was really satisfying. The books on their own are good to a point but if you read them as a series as a whole and I'm just dropping them all over the place here it's hard to hold three books but the series as a whole I think really just it works better if you read them that way. Like, I read these over the course of a, quite a long time frame, and, like, I don't know, I kind of felt like if I'd read them all straight through in one go, it works better. It's almost sort of like how Lord of the Rings was actually one book, but they decided to break it into three books. I think that that's what happened here. I feel like this was actually supposed to be one book, maybe, and it just got divided up. I think it would have worked better as one long book, even though that would be a really long book. I mean, that's, like... These are all like 400 pages each, but you know what I mean? It, it just flows better that way. So what I liked about these books was the magic system I thought was really intriguing. I liked that um, magic in the series isn't a born trait, it's a learned skill, and that you have to work really, really hard. And I think that was an overarching theme too in this book. Like if you work hard enough, you'll get what you want, but it might not actually be what you want. <laughs> And a lot of the stuff that happens in this book, I felt like it was a lot of Quentin, like, I need this, I want to work really hard, I'm going to get this thing. And then this thing wasn't anything that he thought it was going to be. And I think that's a really good, like, parallel to growing up and becoming an adult. You work, When you're a kid or a teenager, you look at being an adult as this amazing experience. Like, I can't wait to be an adult so I can do whatever I want and have all these things. And then when you get there, you're like, oh crap, I'm an adult. <laughs> and you it, this series as a whole is a lot about like just growing up and learning what it is to be an adult and learning that responsibility is a consequence of adulthood almost and you have to deal with that and you have to learn how to live with that and I just like by the end of the book Quentin is an adult you can tell like he has matured he understands what all those stupid things he did before were stupid and he sees that and he wishes he could go back and fix it but he can't and but he's matured enough to like do the right thing, what he thinks is the right thing. And I just, I just feel like all the characters went through something like that at some point within the story where they just realized that they needed to grow up. So I really highly recommend these. Actually, I wouldn't, I would never have highly recommended The Magicians on its own, but as a whole, I would recommend the series to, if you like fantasy. If you read Narnia growing up, I feel like this whole series is kind of an homage to those kinds of stories, like Narnia, like um, Five Children and It, Half Magic, I'm trying to think of other books, like those, those kinds of stories where children find this magical place or find this magical item and they have to figure it all out on their own. And that's exactly, I think, what the story is about, except with adults finding this thing and, and having to deal with it and figure it all out on their own. Because one of the things that I think they touch on quite a lot throughout the story is that Fillory in the books is not Fillory in their real world. Fillory is magic, but it isn't fairy tale magic. It's a dark magic. It's almost like a gritty real thing. And they have to real, really realize that it's not what they were expecting it to be. It's not... Life isn't a fantasy. Life isn't a fairy tale. It's, it's dark and it's hard. And that, I think, encapsulates what the series is about, honestly. 
So if you enjoyed those kinds of books growing up and you want to read a little bit of a darker version of that, then I highly recommend The Magician's Trilogy by Love Grossman. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Happy reading! Bye!